Welcome to the beautiful Sunflower State. It's time for the Arkham Menard Series Reese's 150 at Kansas Speedway. Just two races to go before we crown a champion. The Arkham Menard Series, all of the teams are ready. Okay, have fun. Let's go win it. Green flag is in the air. This is a great opportunity for these guys to showcase their talent. It's so much more intense than I anticipated. We have trouble. Hard contact. We got a big crash. This is a big one. I think we're going to see them in victory lane many more times. We are ready to go racing. And what a beautiful evening in Kansas City. Kansas, not a cloud in the sky. A perfect way to kick off fall. Well, we have so many stories to get to, so let's just jump right down, go to pit lane, and say hello to Amanda Busick. Jamie, in her first trip ever to a mile and a half track, her crew chief, Billy Venturini, told Isabella to hold it wide open. And boy, did you do just that. And just your fourth ever start here in ARCA, you were on the pole. How much trust did that require? It took a lot of trust. Um, just working with Billy has been great all week. Um, just kind of trying to get all the info that I can. And uh, he said it to hold it wide open and qualifying, and that's what I did. So I wound up on pole. And um, just going into this race, it's going to be a big learning curve for me, especially with the air. But starting out front is going to help that tremendously. So I'm going to try and get out, be in that clean air to start the race, and hopefully make our day way, way, way easier to start. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Heather? Amanda, Andres Perez has held on to the points lead since we were here at Kansas Speedway in the spring. But one thing that's been missing from his successful season is a win. And Andres, we've talked a lot about how hungry you are for that win. But what level of importance is a win for you in your championship hunt? Yeah, for sure. I think we've we had a, a great season so far in the whole Rev Racing team. Uh, it's been a great year with very consistent top, top finishes. Uh, but like you said, we're still missing that win. I think Kansas is the perfect track to do it. Uh, I think we have a shot. I think we, we, we do have speed on the two car, and this is a great track to do it. So, uh, like you said, we're very hungry to get it. If, if it comes, uh, we'll take it. But if not, uh, we know that the championship hunt uh, is, is a greater thing. So, so, yeah, we're focused on that, trying to get a, a clean race too. And, and yeah, I think we should, we should be good. You've been close before, so what are you going to have to do differently today to lock in the win and get that victory? I think taking the lead is important. Uh, a dirty year is a big thing here in the in the bigger tracks, uh, like Michigan. We're chasing; uh, it's hard to be to be that. So, so we're going to try and be the leader, uh, and that should get us the win. Yes. Thank you. All right, Jamie. We'll see if tonight's the night for Andres Perez to get his first career victory. Oh, Heather, he has been close so many times, finished second five times. Perhaps tonight could be the night. Well, we're so happy you're joining us on this doubleheader Friday night. I'm Jamie Little. He is Phil Parsons, and we have so many storylines. We're going to jump into them throughout the evening. But off the top, what's on your mind, Phil? Well, coming here, and I always do when I come to an intermediate racetrack, I want to see what the drivers do for their first time. We have several drivers in the field making their first ever start. Two of the drivers I wanted to keep my eye on are on the front row. We just talked to Isabella, just heard from her. She has the right attitude. She says, I still have a lot to learn about the air. I want to stay out in that clean air, and that's going to make it a little bit easier. It's easy to go from running 100 miles an hour side by side with somebody on a short track, but here doing it is G. Ruggiero, another guy making his first ever start on intermediate track. He's got two second place finishes this year. Dover is one of those, but it's easy to do that at 100 miles an hour, but not so much at 175 miles an hour. And we're going to watch him. And Corey Day, we've talked a lot about him over the last couple of weeks. He's making his third ARCA start, but again, it's his first start on an intermediate racetrack. He's used to running dirt cars at a half and three eighths of a mile racetracks. So he's had a great top 10 finish at Bristol last week. So I'm, I'm curious to see what these drivers, how they're going to react to these, these speeds at this mile and a half racetrack. Well, I know they all did a lot of research, and anytime you see the research, you see how racy this place is. You can race everywhere. Just in the in the last cup race here in May, closest finish in series history. So I expect more of that tonight. But why is it so racy at Kansas Speedway? I think one of the reasons is the redesign. They redesigned this race truck, reconfigured it about a dozen years ago, and they put progressive banking. That means it's banked a little bit more at the top. As you can see here, 17 degrees at the bottom, up to 20 degrees at the top. So there's a little more 
speed up there at the top on occasion. The fast way around this racetrack when you're qualifying is right on the bottom, but you will see these mock cars migrate all the way up to the top of the racetrack, and that's the beauty of it. You can still make time on the bottom. It's a shorter way around. You can do it in the middle. You can do it on the top of the racetrack, and we will see all of that and probably at the same time, three wide in these corners. Yes, I know it's going to be a lot for these newcomers like Isabella Robusto, but so far, so good just figuring it out, becoming just the sixth woman in ARCA history to sit on the pole. We have five women in the field tonight. We'll be following that and everything else. Stay with us. 150 miles of action is coming up. ARCA Racing on FS1 is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And by Bounty. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. The Arkham Menard Series is in action, but it's championship night for the Arkham Menard Series East. Connor Zilich is the points leader over William Sawalich, and they start in the front row tonight. It's Zilich and William Sawalich. They're wheel to wheel. Trouble, oh, no. big trouble for Connor Zilich. His night is done. William Sawalich takes the checkered flag. He wins it at Bristol Motor Speedway and becomes the Arkham Menard Series East champion for the second straight year. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. It is a gorgeous fall evening. And looking back to a week ago, what a battle. And uh, un uncertain <laughs> circumstances, obviously, for Connor Zilich. First time he's seen himself in that position. Obviously, didn't have a chance to run for the championship. But, man, those two have put on a show this year. Boy, they sure have. It's amazing how many wins that those two drivers have combined this year. I think 13 wins combined for those two. Uh, Zilich is going to have his work cut out for him, though. He's going to have to move to the back of the pack for the start of this race. So that's going to be fun for us to watch. Some unapproved adjustments, so he will go to the rear. Well, earlier today, big news that Menards has extended their partnership with the ARCA Series for multiple years, so it's fitting that one of their representatives is trackside to give the command to fire engines. Kansas Speedway, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Please welcome Menards Vice President Quinn Kramer. Drivers, start your engines. Earlier today, we had practice and qualifying. We talk about it. We've inter interviewed her. She did tremendous. Her sights are set on her first mile and a half track. Isabella Robusto picks up the general tire pole award. Just the sixth woman in series history. Yeah, her car owner, Billy Venturini, said, hold it wide open, and she did it. <laughs> what a great job, Isabella. But I'm telling you, it's, I knew that she would do well here because she's done well all year long. So it's not a huge shock, but still really impressive. Trying to do something that's never been done before. Win a race. Woman has never been able to do that in NASCAR or the Arkham Menard series. Let's take a look now at the Reese's 150 starting lineup. Isabella on the front row alongside Gio Ruggiero, her teammate in the 20. Yeah, Gio with a couple of runner-up finishes already this year. Chris Wright comes in here in top five in points. He's looking for his first win as well. And there's Connor Zilich. We've talked about him five wins in seven starts this year, but we'll be going to the back for the start. Tanner Gray there back for Joe Gibbs Racing in the 18. Won a race earlier this season at Charlotte. There's our championship battle, Andres Perez and LeVar Scott. Andres Perez with a huge lead, though, with two to go. Corey Day doing double duty for the second straight week in a row. A lot of talk about that young man. And Tony Breidinger, row number six. Lawless Allen, another one of our double duty drivers. There's our Daytona winner from last year, Greg Van Alst, and his teammate, Isaac Johnson, back in row number seven. Christian Rose in the 32, one of the most beautiful paint schemes. See it in the middle of your screen right there. Jason Kitzmiller with some good runs this year as well. One to watch. There's a U.S. Marine, Chris Tate, back there in row number nine. Local, local game for Mandy Chick. She's back in row number 10, a top 10 finisher here before. Eric Caudel, Michael Maples. Rita Goulet in the 31, and Kevin Hinkle outside. 
Brad Smith, Alex Club, row 14, and that will do it for your Reese's 150 starting lineup. All right, four on boards for this evening, Phil. Yeah, let's check out. This is Amber Balkan. She will be starting 10th. This is the general tire on board. Amber's also up in the top six in points, looking to try to get into the top five. LaVar Scott been doing a great job. He's carrying the Sioux Chief on board. Starts eighth, second in the points right now. Yeah, we're also going to ride along with our point leader, Andres Perez, who will be starting in the seventh spot. This is the Sioux Chief fast track on board, Andres could possibly all but show up at Toledo next week to get that championship. What an outstanding, consistent year it's been for Andres Perez. It really has been. And Isabella Robusto starting on the pole. She's carrying the general tire onboard camera. The 19-year-old hails from Fort Mill, South Carolina. She's in the Toyota pipeline. They discovered her. They backed her the last few years, and we're just getting to see exactly why. She's quite talented and one we will follow along tonight. But our bounty rookie spotlight tonight. Just mentioned him, LeVar Scott in the sixth, driving for Rev Racing, starting outside his teammate. LeVar's first year, full-time effort this year. Leads the rookie of the year standings, which is a nice coup. He'll wrap that up at two, our next race next week. Two runner-up weekend. finishes this year for LeVar Scott. He really got a bit of a hold the first three races of the year. He found himself 28 points behind Andres Perez and has really done an outstanding job since then. But uh, that that little gap he lost at the first three races has been pretty much insurmountable as as uh, consistent as Andres Perez has been. And our Sioux Chief fast track driver, a driver that's going places, Andres Perez in the number two for Rev Racing. Talked about him looking to wrap up his first championship. Rumor has it he's moving on up, maybe going truck racing next year. Made his truck series debut at Gateway this year. Did a tremendous job. Got the attention of many for sure. Look at the consistency though. 38 starts, 31 of those finishes in the top 10. A couple mechanical issues this year actually got involved in an accident on the last lap at Daytona while it was running in the top 10 and then busted a radiator at one of the dirt tracks. His only finishes outside the top 10 this year. Let's get some last minute updates. Amanda. Yeah, Jamie, as you guys were talking at the top of the show about Gio Ruggiero and his first trip to a mile and a half as well, I asked him how he prepped for this race. He said, well, I did a ton of laps on iRacing, but I also watched some film of Corey Heim here. Well, not a bad choice considering Corey Heim picked up two wins in the ARCA seasons. I asked, well, what are your realistic expectations? He said, without hesitation, I'm going to win tonight. Heather? And Connor Zilich originally qualified fourth, but will drop to the rear due to unapproved adjustments. His team telling him right now this is just a little bit of a setback, but do not worry about it. Just go out there and have fun. And Connor Zilich reported back to the team. Thank you guys so much for the effort so far this season. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to this last race and putting on a show for these fans here tonight. Thank you, Heather. You saw those stats there. Five wins and eight starts. Certainly have his work cut out for him tonight. Watch Connor Zilich and that 28 team make their way through the pack. So Isabella Robusto finds herself in a new spot on the pole, leading this field to green. Gio Ruggiero, teammate leaning on her right there. Green flag is in the air. We are racing at Kansas Speedway. Venturini Motorsports, nose to nose into turn one. Gio with a great initial start. He jumps out in front, takes the lead. Isabella remains second on the bottom of the racetrack. Andy Jankoyak on the outside in that 73 car moved up because Zilich moving back, started fourth side by side now for second with Isabella. How about Andy J? Great to see him back with a great effort. Fast race car in practice, qualifying, taking advantage of it right now, shown in the fourth spot. Okay, Isabella is into the wall. Caution is out. Our pole sitter, big trouble early on. She got a little bit loose down in three and four, was losing some positions. Looked like she tried to move back in line and squeeze somebody as she was getting it down in turn number one. That car is big time damaged. 
Yeah, that may very well be terminal for Isabella. What a that's that's the problem is she just doesn't get the laps. She she, she doesn't get the laps to learn. Talking about that air, watch. She's going to get a little bit loose on the bottom. You see her wiggle right there. She loses momentum, and now cars go on either side of her. She's going to try to get back up in line. That's Tanner Gray, that blue car, number 18. She's going to try to get in line. Looks like maybe in front of Andres Perez. She wasn't quite clear and made fairly significant contact with the outside safer barrier. Tough, tough break for that uh, outstanding young lady. There's another view that she just wasn't quite clear, Jamie, when they got down to turn number one. Well, they get 45 minutes of practice, and that is it. You show up to this racetrack you've never seen before. Here's Andres. He sees her in trouble with lost her momentum. He's going to try to go by on the high side. He heard him try to get out of the throttle as she came up, but he just couldn't get stopped in time. Let's go on board with Isabella. She's already got loose down there in three and four. You see Tanner Gray going by in that 18. Now she's going to try to move up in line behind Tanner Gray. Just misjudged it just, just by a little bit. Caught that right front or left front corner of Andres Perez's car. Talk about a swing of emotions. In just a matter of about five minutes, you go from leading the field to green on the pole to your day being finished as they'll take her to the infield care center. We'll step aside, two races in, 98 to go for the Arkham and Art Series. Lap number two, Isabella Robusto hits hard to the outside wall. She went to the infield care center. But you know, since the drop of the green flag, we do have a recent sweep move of the race, Phil. I think it belongs to Connor Zilich in the 28, who had to start in the back of the field. He's up four spots. Yeah, we documented the fact that he had to start at the back and, and only one lap, too, because remember, that was just completing lap number one when that caution flag came out. You can see Connor Zilich now just taking his time. I think Shane Huff and his crew chief said, hey, we have plenty of time. Take your time. And he's doing just that. So he will continue to move forward. Remember to visit ArcaRacing.com on Monday at 3 Eastern to see who is crowned the Reese's Sweet Move of the race. He's had quite a few of those nominations so far this year. He has. He has. Well, when you win five races, you're going to get a, you're going to make a few good moves. Speaking of good moves, how about the 73 shown as the race leader, Andy Jankowiak, came to play today. He's up on that front row. Remember, he got to the line first. Uh, Gio Ruggiero grabbed the start right as the drop of the green flag. But Andy Jay was able to parlay that starting fourth because of Zilich moving back to the back into a great start right now running second. Andy Jankowiak, love when he's in the field, the pizza delivery guy, upstate New York, rocks the headband. Great personality. Here he is restarting on the outside. But Gio Ruggiero is the control car on the inside. Green flag is in the air once again. Look at Tanner Gray. That blue car looks to the inside of LeVar Scott. Going to make it through wide. There's no room. Three wide. There's Rubin. They all keep it straight. Andy Jinkowiak slides back. That's the problem with making that move. You have to believe as Chris Wright now is going to try to go to the inside of Tanner Gray. That's Chris Wright in the 15 car. Andy Jay is going to shut the door on him. Corey Day on the high side. You have to have a lot of trust that those other people know you're there. Obviously, they didn't all know and they made some contact there. Hopefully the tires will will stay up. Corey Day with a nice run in that 82 for Hendrick Cars as we take a look at the replay here. Watch Tanner make that move. You see the car on the outside. That was Andy Jay. I don't think he had any idea that they were three wide going in turn one. That could have been catastrophic. This is LeVar Scott. Watch the 73 squeeze LeVar Scott. LeVar had to give Tanner Gray some room. The blue car on the bottom. And after that, Chris Wright in the 15 says, I'm getting the heck out of here. Pulls a bold move to the bottom. Just got a little bit loose right there on the bottom. Battle right back in lead. fifth. Great battle heating up here. The 18. Tanner Gray. 
found victory lane, as we mentioned earlier in the season at Charlotte after dominating here, only to lose the win to Connor Mozak. Yeah, and I know he loved to get that win at Charlotte, but I'm telling you, as we see, you see more gaggle. action, he, he, this one got away from him, and, and he's got a little bit of a, I guess a little bit of a redemption on his mind here. Greg Van Alsen, the 35 there. Looks like he just clips the 22 of Amber Balkin. Nice job by Amber to save that oh card. And a little more contact with Jason Kitzmiller in the 97. Going to ride along with Amber. She's going to get a little bit of a shot in the left rear quarter panel. It's going to turn her sideways. Great job keeping it straight there. And there <laughs> And there's Kitzmiller that came along on the outside while she was trying to keep it straight. Tony Breidinger almost had a piece of that in the 25. She entered the picture as well on the bottom. That was an almost second caution. Everybody settles down. Tanner Gray continues to lead Gio Ruggiero. See, Tanner Gray now has opened up about a two-second lead over Gio Ruggiero. Remember, he had over a 10-second lead here in the spring at the halftime break, only to get beaten by Connor Mozak with about 15 laps to go. Well, Isabella's day went from great to terrible. She made it two laps. She's at the infield care center with Heather. Yeah, checked and released here, Isabella Robesto, from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. I know that you were nervous about getting in dirty air and things like that, so can you kind of walk us through what happened in that incident? Yeah, I felt like we had a really fast uh, mobile one Toyota Camry, but um, I don't really know what happened there. I definitely have to go about and watch the replay, but um, I think I maybe wasn't clear. Someone had a run up top, um, and I just ended up in the wall, but uh, unfortunate, that's how the day ended. Um, I thought we could run pretty well here, and um, I, not how I want to start my first mile and a half, but we'll have another shot and hopefully do a little bit better. Thanks, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. And while Isabella was talking, we saw Jason Kitzmiller make his way down pit road. Looked like a flat left rear after that contact. Saw the nice pass by Andy J on Gio Ruggiero. That moves Andy up to the third spot as you see Kitzmiller completing his pit work, stalled the car trying to leave pit road. Probably will find himself a couple laps down by the time he gets back up to speed. Looked like Ruggiero was a little bit loose up off the corner there off the turn through, but there's our lead and now with over a three second lead. Tanner Gray is on the move. Corey Day though up to second. Plenty of racing still to come from Kansas. Welcome back to the Reese's 150 at Kansas Speedway. Tanner Gray has a rocket ship. Three and a half second lead over Corey Day. But the big story as we're watching, Connor Zilich took him 17 laps to go from the back of the pack up to fourth, and he <laughs> continues. So impressive. Chris Wright's doing a really nice job holding down that third spot. There's Zilich right there running the top of the racetrack. I love that these young drivers just jump in there, Jamie, and go right to the top where that grip is. And Connor Zilich, as you mentioned, all the way back up to fourth where he was originally supposed to start this race. And when I talked to him just prior to tonight, he said, I'm not really worried about getting to the front. It's going to be once I get to where the competitive cars are, it's going to be chasing them down. And as I said, that his spotter, Derek Nealon, just told him, once you get within three or four car lengths, you're going to want to be a headlight lower on corner X. And I, I believe that means when he's talking about catching up to the 15, 82, and 18 at this point. But Connor has been so tremendous so far, we can't talk enough about his talent. And he sure is putting on a show already, which he did promise us at the beginning of the race. He is one busy driver. There's Shane Huffman on the pit box there. Seven races he has scheduled in the month of September. We're nearing the end of it. Last weekend alone, obviously did double duty at Bristol, ran the ARCA race, had a problem earlier, and then he ran the truck race, and then he went up to Indianapolis and ran the IPSA race. <laughs> this guy just races more than anybody I know. Nice battle between teammates, LeVar Scott in the six, Andres Perez, for seven. It's a good illustration of how 
A little bit more banking up at the top of the racetrack. See LeVar Scott able to carry a little bit more momentum off the corner from the top side. Here Perez having to pedal that throttle a little bit. I don't think his car is quite to his liking at this point. Again, he could have had some damage from that contact with Isabella Robusto. Heather DeBow had talked to Andres pre-race, and he sounded pretty optimistic about tonight. They always run really well here, and he thought perhaps tonight he'd finally get that win. He's worked so hard to try and get. He's finished second five times. But like you said, he's probably looking forward to that break at lap 50, the scheduled caution where they can fix the car up, make some adjustments. Again, more than likely, probably pushed in that right front fender when he made contact with Isabella. Right now, you see Tanner Gray. He had over a three-second lead a few laps ago. Corey Day is actually closing that down inside of three seconds, Amanda. Yeah, and his spotter's been telling him about what's happening behind him and how the guys that are chasing him are running this track. Tanner has started to improve his lap times in the last two. And so the results from his spotter, what they're saying, is clearly showing. But uh, they were worried about the letters off of the right front tire. It doesn't seem to be causing an issue at this point. But Tanner just telling his team that he's struggling with the car when it loads up around Kansas. So Tanner Gray's lead now just under two seconds over Corey Day. Yeah, pretty heavy traffic, though, for Tanner Gray. That's why he's lost a little bit of that lead he had. See him making his way around. See the fastest lap yeah. right there. Connor Zilich, the man on the move in fourth. Yeah, I think Tanner Gray's car is still awfully good. Right now, there's Chris Wright. He's doing a nice job holding up, holding off Connor Zilich, I would have rather say. And all these top five continually running laps as the fastest five in the field. Tanner Gray running for Joe Gibbs racing in that 18, and they've just been so incredible this year. Nine wins between him and William Sawalich. Last week, they wrapped up that Arkham Menards East Championship once again. <laughs> They're making a habit of that. We but, talked uh, about we talked about William Sawalich in that drive for 10 wins. Obviously, he only has one race left, and he's stuck on eight, so he could certainly do nine. But the team could do 10, which would be Equally impressive. They already have nine. They have two shots at it here at Kansas and then at Toledo with William Sawalich. Matt Ross, the fearless leader over there, just knows how to get it done. They just have such an incredible notebook because they don't have a teammate. So they come to these Ooh. places ready to go. Wow, that just happened right in front of Connor Zillage as he snuck up on Chris Wright. Yeah, Chris got into the wall a little bit, it looked like. Didn't lose a lot of momentum, but I think Zilich might have backed off when he saw Chris Wright up in the wall just to give him time to get it straight. But he, Zilich goes ahead and takes that third spot now. Let's take a look at that one once again. Watch that white blue car. You see Chris Wright into the outside wall, backs off the throttle. Zilich had to actually hit the brakes, I'm sure, when he came up on him. So close, Amanda. Yeah, I don't want to say that there were team orders there, but in listening to the radio of the 15, the crew chief was telling him, hey, if you have to give up this spot to Connor Zillich, just know that us four talking about the Venturini cars and those around Connor, we are better than him. We'll get to the break, and then we will reassess and make sure that we beat him at the end, but race smart. See, Chris is able to hang right with Connor. See the leader coming up on Jason Kitzmiller, who had to pit earlier for those issues. 31 laps in the books, 68 to go from Kansas Speedway. Stay with us. Who's going to win this one? Welcome back to the Reese's 150 at Kansas Speedway. Bill Parsons, Jamie Little. Trevor Bain is not here tonight, usually with us. He's under the weather. We're sending our best to him. Of course, Heather DeBow, Amanda Busick on pit road. 
Well, Tanner Gray continues to lead, but this time he's extended it. He's gotten through that lap traffic about 4.8 seconds over Corey Day, who runs second. Yeah, Corey Day got hung up behind that 97 that he just passed of Jason Kitzmiller. Actually had a little contact on the backstretch. Took him a couple laps to get by, and that opened up the lead for Tanner Gray now to over five seconds. But remember, he had over a 10-second lead at the halfway break back here in May, and then ended up getting beat late in the race. So this thing is certainly not over. <laughs> As he tries Ooh. to negotiate the, the cars that are sideways in front of him. I think that was Eric Caudell in the seven car. Eric Caudell in 16th right now had that moment, but Tanner Gray smooth sailing over Corey Day. Connor Zillich still running third. Chris Wright, Andy Jake Kowiak hanging on to that top five. You know, Gio Ruggiero has fallen off a little more than we expected. Obviously started on the front row. Yeah, he's 30 seconds behind here. He's in danger of going a lap down, as well as the six of LeVar Scott and Andres Perez. Now, all three of those drivers over 30 seconds behind our leader. Andy Jankowiak loved to call him Mr. Personality. What are you hearing from him, Heather? Well, I'm talking to Andy J earlier today. He told me they really fought this race car in practice. They couldn't quite find the handling they wanted. He said he couldn't really get it to turn to the bottom. But this team consistently has had speed from about fifth to tenth place. So today they experimented with some adjustments to get that top five speed. And it looks like it's working out for them because they are currently running fifth. But right now his handling is just a little tick too free at the moment. The experimenting has worked so far for Andy Jankowiak. Great speed there. Tanner Gray is now lapped up to the seventh spot. LeVar Scott next in line. Yeah, Andres Perez, our championship point leader, now has gone a lap down. Doesn't look like maybe that first win is going to come here. There's Tanner Gray trying to move around LeVar Scott. Remember, LeVar is running in the seventh spot right now. Right in front of LeVar Scott is Gio Ruggiero running in the sixth spot. Tanner Gray led 86 laps here in the spring, and you mentioned it wasn't over till the end, and it wasn't him in victory lane. But to have a car this good, this is just what this team does. They pick up right where they left off. Nope, and and don't you know that in the back of their mind, they're keeping an eye on that 28 car. They know he started at the back. They know he moved up into the top five extremely quickly, as you'd mentioned. And they're saying, OK, what does that 28 car have? Because they know what the rest of the competition has because they've been able to drive away from them. But again, right now, their mind is on that third place running counter Zillage. Just about six laps to go before the caution comes out. They won't have to look around much because he's going to he's going to find that 28 car more than likely will be in that second row for the restart after our mid race break. During the scheduled caution at lap 50 they can change tires add fuel make all the adjustments they may need. And that'll be it although. Any caution is an opportunity to pit if they need to work on their race car. And Gio Ruggiero did go a lap down now, so that only leaves us with five cars on the lead lap. What a torrid pace that Tanner Gray is setting here. I just can't imagine, Phil, how fun it is to have a race car that good and what that must feel like. It's, uh, it doesn't happen all that often, but it's, uh, it sure is nice when it does. As we keep, keep an eye on Zillich there, running in the third spot there. It's amazing how much time that uh, that some of these drivers will lose in traffic if you, if you catch them. Oh, trouble for Andres Perez in the wall. You had mentioned he may have been damaged from earlier on. It was falling back, went a lap down. He was eighth at the point. Oh, he's got damage both sides of this car. Yeah, you see the damage on the left front. That's from the contact with Isabella on the second lap of the race. Looked like maybe he cut down a right front tire and that caused him to get in the wall. We talk about his consistency. Only two times this year has he been out of the top 10. Let's ride along, Jamie, and see what, uh, if we can figure out what happens here. There we go. Obviously, the right front tire goes down for Andres Perez. Tough, tough break for that young man. At this point, he's very thankful he has the cushion he does and the points. 53-point advantage coming into this race. 
again next weekend, next Saturday, Toledo. We will crown the champion. Most likely it'll be him, but not the race he wanted tonight. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you know, this is the uh, best case scenario for his teammate, LeVar Scott. I know LeVar would not want to see that happen to his teammate, but, but it certainly gives an opportunity if he can make that car better and move up a few positions, it would certainly help because that, if this is not, is not terminal, it's going to be awfully close to it for Andres Perez. There we ride along with LeVar Scott. LeVar right now being shown in the seventh spot. That was Corey Day, our second place runner that just got by him. You hear LeVar pedaling the throttle and you watch Corey Day's blue car get a little bit smaller in the windshield. He's getting through the corners a good bit better than LeVar Scott is right now. Tanner Gray with a five second lead now over Corey Day. See Corey in the 82 right there, blue and white. That's our sixth place running. G. Rogero already a lap down. Corey, Corey Day is trying to put him down as well. See Corey's going to move to the inside to try to make that move on Gio. Andy Jankowiak running fifth. He's next in line to go a lap down to Tanner Gray. Yeah, it's not going to happen though because we're close to that halftime break. We're on lap 50 right now, so. I'm sure the ARC officials will keep an eye on this. More than likely, that caution will come out within a lap or so, and I think that's going to save Andy J. And there it is. Caution is in the air. Second time today, but this is the scheduled caution. Everyone will bring them down pit road. Get any adjustments they need to try to hang with that 18 car. Stay with us. We'll have pit stops on the other side. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. What a glorious night to hang out, to camp. Mm -hmm. Some of these campers, they've been here, well, from early on this week. Big weekend racing. We have a double header tonight. Of course, the Craftsman Truck Series elimination race for the first round is coming up after us, 8.30 Eastern. Xfinity action on Saturday and the Cup Series on Sunday. It's the place to be and we have the most perfect weather. Let's head down to pit road for our Richmond mid-race report. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Jamie. Yeah, it was a dominating first half for Tanner Gray. He led uh, over 40 laps of that first half. You're going to see an impressive sign guy for the 18, Ty Gibbs, helping him into his box. But Tanner was reporting that the car was a bit tight there to the end. They were playing around with some of the fan adjustments on the tires to see if that helped Tanner at all. But the big key was talking Tanner through traffic towards the end of the first lap. There was only a handful of cars, five or six cars still on the lead lap as Tanner was starting to work through some of the better cars here tonight at Kansas. Heather? And for Corey Day, who's running in that second position, this is his first time on a mile and a half, and I asked him after practice today, what was that like for you, if you could describe it in one word? And he said, I don't even think I have a word for it because it's just so different for me. It's like a culture shock. So he's hoping having the extra seat time in the truck will help him out, but so far, so good. He did say, though, that he was really tight in traffic and tight through the center. He says that he believes the 18 of Tanner Gray is making better decisions than he is, but he feels like he should have the pace to be able to keep, keep up with him and run him down. Amanda? Yeah, and Heather, you go to another of one of the Venturini cars uh, in, a, in comparison. Uh, Chris Wright came into the pit box and said, hey, guys, we have a car that can win here tonight. We just need to get an adjustment going for the second half. Said that 80% of that run, they started to tighten up finally at the end. The team has made a big adjustment on the 15 as Chris chases a win here in 2024. And Connor Zilich, just before we went to break, he actually blew, blew a run right front tire. So he had to come down there. You see on your screen, he had to come down pit road before they opened it to change that right front. Here it is, the replay for you. But he was complaining to his team that the car was getting tighter and tighter and just really bad. He said he fired off great and it went to junk. So the team did bring him back in during this scheduled caution at lap 50 to replace the rest of the tires and make some adjustments for him. They also did a tear off and fuel for Connor Zilich. He was able to bring it down pit road, Heather. Uh, very minimal damage, if any. Got that right front tire fixed up, and the car's good to go. So 
Connor Zillich is going to be one to watch here on this he, restart. I think he was fortunate. I don't even think he was up to speed. The caution flag was already out when he cut, when he blew out that right front tire. So you could see the car didn't even didn't even go to the right like we usually see what we saw with An Andres Perez. So very very fortunate for Connor Zillich. That was our Richmond mid race report. A lot of adjustments and a lot of announcements today. A big day for the Arkham Menard Series. They announced the 2025 schedule. You see it there, Daytona, February 15th. You see on the bottom there, noon on Fox. How about that? That's exciting. You see the other races that are highlighted in yellow, Lime Rock Park. Arca Series will make a, make a trip there. We'll run a combination race with a Craftsman Truck Series there and also back to Madison International Speedway in Madison, Wisconsin. Racetrack that the Arca Series used to go to, they're going to go back to this year. But again, what a diverse schedule, 20 races, road courses, dirt tracks, short tracks, super speedways, intermediate tracks. And once again, Kansas here at Kansas will be the only track that the Arca Series will visit twice. Also today, the announcement here Arca signs a multi-year extension with Menards and Fox Sports. So this will continue being the home for Arca on Fox Sports. We'll see it on FS1, FS2, and you saw there on Big Fox when we get to Daytona. Yeah, such a long relationship. Again, this dates back to when, when we were Speed Vision back in the day. So it's uh, it's Arca. It's awesome to have Arca a part of Fox. And, and uh, again, I, I grew up in Arca. My brother was Arca Rookie of the Year in 1965. Of course, I wasn't born yet and yes. well maybe I was but anyway and <laughs> I, then don't, I don't think there's a race you haven't been to in the <laughs> yeah, Arkham and Art exactly. series let's just be honest but it means an awful lot to me this series yes. I've, it's been close to my heart forever and I'm really excited about the relationship that that Fox is going to continue to have as well as Menards I know Menards their title sponsorship entitlement has been a big deal for the Arca series yeah they've been very special and you know what else I love look at the size of this Reese's Cup Hey, they give us some love. We give love back. I mean, look at the goodies that we get here. You're so gonna, you're going to have buy to wait for this? a commercial. You know, you, I am. I, th I think we can do it. It's not. Wait a minute. It's not a commercial yet. <laughs> I can. I can smell these. Look at these half pound Reese's cups. It is the Reese's 150, and we appreciate them sending these along because, yeah. you know, I will get a knife oh, and yeah. fork and break into this bad boy. Awesome partner for the Arkham and Art series and, and, and us here as well. It really is. So congratulations to Arkham and Arts and, and everybody involved with the announcement today. And we're we're thrilled they'll be back here on our airwaves. Sure do enjoy covering this series, Phil. I mean, we, we get to talk about these young guys and ladies coming up. And then we talk about them in the truck series, Xfinity and the Cup Series. This is the future. Yeah, we have, what, uh, 16 and 12, 12, 38 drivers made the playoffs this year uh, in NASCAR, whether the three series, Cup Series, Xfinity Series, and Truck Series. 26 of those drivers have won races in the Arca Series. Nine of those drivers have won races in the Arca Series here at Kansas. So the Arca Series has meant a lot to NASCAR over the years. The ultimate development series when it comes to stock car mm -hmm. racing. And that's why we see, we talk about these diverse backgrounds and where all these drivers come from. I mean, some start in open wheel. Connor Zilich, one of those. Some come from dirt backgrounds, but they all like to come here. Well, speaking of the trucks, I mentioned the Craftsman Truck Series coming up. Phil Parsons, myself, Jamie Little, will be doing double duty. Amanda Busick as well. Michael Waltrip will join us. We're coming up at 8.30 Eastern, and it's an elimination race. Elimination race. race. Big, Big time. Big things on the line here tonight for the Truck Series. We'll go from 10 drivers to 8. We'll move on to Talladega next week. We're going to crush two of those drivers' playoff folks, championship folks unfortunately here tonight and our defending series champion one of those on outside looking in right now ben rhodes that's surprising yeah he's in the he's in the lowest spot right now he's got his work cut out for him but he has a fast truck here he qualified up in the top five practice in the top five so you can never count him out how about ty majeski he's starting on pole so he's got a rocket ship tonight and here's the playoff leaderboard we're talking about. You see Christian Eckes, Corey Heim, Nick Sanchez. They're all advancing. They're in. They can breathe a sigh of relief tonight. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to count Ty Majeski in, too. All he has to do is make it get in that truck to start the race almost, and he's going to be okay. But then it gets interesting. Raja is pretty safe after that tremendous run at Bristol last week. But after that, it's going uh, to get pretty dicey. Well, we heard about this. Uh, Top dollar, high dollar pit sign holder. Amanda, who do you have? 
Oh, none other than a guy that has won here in ARCA as well, Mr. Ty Gibbs. He said that he volunteered for that position, but just rooting on Tanner. What have you seen so far from him? Well, it looks like he's pretty fast, so hopefully he can uh, you know, keep it up front and stay away from all, all the mess. It looks like it's a little dicey in the back, so well, it looks really good. So but we're all proud of him, and hopefully he can go out there and win it. It'll be awesome. Well, you get a first look at this track, too, watching the race here tonight. What are your chances on Sunday? Uh, I don't know yet. Hopefully really well. I love Kansas. This is a great track. I think everybody that comes here can see the same thing and very nice facility. It's really well, well taken care of. So, uh, you know, hope, hopefully we could win. It'd be awesome. And go hammer down. Nice. Good luck. I like the team support down there. Mm -hmm. Ty Gibbs, what an impact he made on this series. 18 wins, the 2021 champion, and we've all seen what he's done in a very short period of time climbing that ladder to the Cup Series. Well, we're ready to get back to racing for the second half of this race tonight. Tanner Gray leads Corey Day on the front row. Great restart from the outside. Remember Zillich by pitting too early had to go to the back once again for this initial start, but he's making his way up through the middle, it looks like, in traffic. Corey Day staying right with it as we have him three and four wide. Look at Chris Wright trying to get underneath Amber. No room. And sideways, Chris Wright gets into Amber Balkin. Teammates Amber with a great save once again. And she straightens it out. I'm, I'm going to give her the Reese's Sweet move right now. Right now. Regardless of what else happens in this race. We're going to have to take a look at that again. That was impressive. She was sideways. She was drifting. She was drifting is what she was doing. You called it Reese's it sweet move of the race. It's a nominee right now. You have to tune in. Wow. See Chris Ryder, teammate, the 15, was trying to get inside her. At the last second, he tried to get woe down. Unfortunately, made contact. An amazing save by Amber. Look how sideways that car is. And a great save by Chris Wright and Molly Allen right behind him. He saw that happening, got off the gas. So tune in Monday, ArcaRacing.com at 3 Eastern to find out who will be crowned Reese's sweet move of the race. But I think Phil just gave it to Amber Balkin. I did, but Corey Day said, well, maybe not so fast here. Maybe if I can take the lead, maybe that'll be a sweet move. How about this? The best battle we have had up front for the lead. Nobody's had anything for Tanner Gray. Greg Ives, longtime cup crew chief on the box as they're side by side. Caution is out for the third time. Rita Goulet, I believe. This is a stopped car. There she is. I don't see any contact. Hopefully she doesn't have any damage to the right side. Now the right side looks straight as well, but you can see the black mark. She spawned coming off turn two. Fortunately got it stopped before making any contact with the inside wall. What a battle for the lead. Mm. Corey Day just turned up the wick. Greg Ives got it done. We say that happens so many times when the teams have a chance to work on these cars. Take a look right there. That's going to be Rita Goulet. You see, she's already sideways. It's a pretty nice save. She caught that car as it came down off the racetrack onto the apron. We're under caution for the third time. Riding on board with Amber Balkin. Gets into her teammate and saves it. Wow, impressive. Time, and that is the championship point leader, Andres Perez, back in the garage. But Heather, they're trying to get it fixed to salvage a couple points here. That's exactly right, Jamie. It's big picture for them. They want to hang on to the points lead and lock up the championship next week in Toledo. But you can see that heavy damage to the car. And here you see Andres sitting inside. Before he brought it behind the wall, he told the team he had no brakes. So they're fixing the brake issue. There was also a right front control arm they had to fix. Heavy damage in both fender wells that they took mallets to to get that car hopefully back out on track. The team has been thrashing now ever since he came behind the wall, but it's a no give up effort here for Rev Racing. Well, I like the effort. He came in with quite a cushion, 53 points over Labar Scott. Right now as he sits, he has just a 39 point advantage, but we have just that one race to go. And you mentioned it, Heather, FS2, 
4 p.m. Eastern next Saturday. That is the season finale. Yeah, and the good news for LeVar Scott is he was able to get the free pass on this caution flag. So now he is back on the lead lap. That gives us seven cars on the lead lap. So the potential there is now for him to gain some positions. We have 34 laps to go at the line. So just as the caution came out, we had a battle for the lead. Tanner Gray, Corey Day side by side. Big break for Zilich too, remember, because of pitting early, he had to start at the back of the pack. Now he can join the lead lap cars. He will restart this race in sixth outside the third row. Yeah, Corey Day has been really impressive. First time being at a, at a track a mile and a half in size. His third start in the Arkham and Art Series this year. Had a great top 10 finish at Bristol last week in the Arkham car. Remember, he's essentially, he's a teammate to counter Zillich, even though Greg Ives and his bunch are taking care of the car here. That car comes out of Pinnacle Racing Group shop, just like the 28 of counter Zillich does. He'll get out of this race car and he'll jump into the truck. Maybe we'll have to stop in victory lane before then, but he'll have to go through that 18 car. As we're green once again, Tanner Gray, Corey Day, Chris Wright, Gio Ruggiero. See, Tanner was able to clear Corey Day before they got to turn one. Watch Zillich up on the high side. Trying to make it three wide. Chris Wright just in front of him. Just over 30 laps to go here. It's time to go for Zillich to see if he can go up there and run with those front two cars. It appears as though Gio Ruggiero, they got their car a little bit better on that pit stop. See him racing with his teammate Chris Wright. That is a battle for the third spot with counter Zillich right there behind him. Zillich in fifth, trying to pick up a couple of spots right here. Saw Tanner Gray go to the bottom of the racetrack. Corey, Di Corey Day stayed up top. You see a little bit of momentum from Corey Day. He's going to try to make the move on the inside. He's going to get loose down there. And he's sideways. He takes Tanner with him. Tanner keeps it off the wall. Corey Day goes to the bottom of the racetrack. And the caution is out. That was very reminiscent of, of Amber's slide. A great job by Corey Day. I'm telling you, that was so much sideways that the arc officials thought he was going to spin and threw a caution. And I don't, I don't blame him because if he spins and goes back up the racetrack, that could have been catastrophic. But another great, great save by Corey Day. There's Greg Ives right there trying to assess the damage. What a save by Tanner Gray as well. He was up inside that outside wall and he kept it, kept it off somehow. Yeah, see Tanner pulled right down to the side. Watch Tanner pull right down close to him. That's going to get that car loose. I knew that situation. He couldn't even turn down to the bottom, Jamie. He was loose getting in the corner. But watch this. Now he's used to being sideways. That's what he's done his right. whole life on dirt. And you see in this moment, Chris Wright in the 15 just watches. And he capitalizes, makes his way through. So Chris Wright shown as the race leader right now. Connor Zilich sees all that happen. He picks up a spot. He now moves into third. Jamie, I know I said let's give Amber Balkin that Reese's <laughs> sweet move, but it, it very much looked the same. I think I'm going to give her the edge because she did it first. But uh, very great save by Corey Day. Say Corey Day has more experience driving it sideways than Amber. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, exactly. But that's part of that's part of why he's here to learn those things, to learn what happens when somebody drives down on your door and takes that air off that rear spoiler. Oh, we talk about what he does. I told you he was sideways all the time, Jamie. He's comfortable there. Comfortable and comfortable going to victory lane as well. Late models. Goes to victory lane at Hickory Motor Speedway in Hickory, North Carolina. Pretty impressive feat here. One of his first times ever on asphalt. I think maybe it was his second time ever on asphalt. He's going to come in, at least check that right front tire, make sure it's not down, and probably clearance that right front fender. He's got a little bit of a crab walk as he makes it down pit road. Heather. 
And Greg Ives, his crew chief, said, we really want to get a good look at this right front because you made contact with the left rear of the 18, and they're worried about how it pushed the right front fender in onto that tire. But you guys talk about that car control with Corey Day. He really put those dirt track skills to the test there and pulled through, but his spotter, Tyler Mon, who spots for Kyle Larson, he didn't even take a breath. He was just like, you got it, you got it. Keep it going straight. He had full confidence that the 82 wasn't going to spin out there. And Heather, there was drama for Tanner Gray. Thought that he was losing a left rear there um, after that caution. The team was assessing Tanner as he was driving by here on pit road. Uh, ended up deciding to stay out. He told his team, I'm confident that this is back up, but do you guys have any pictures of this tire? Matt Ross told him, hey, buddy, we don't. But if you're confident, stay out there and let's see how this goes. Well, our director, Roger, get a shot of it right there the left rear no general tire logo on there so certainly a rub from the contact with Corey Day. yeah exactly because Corey days that's where the right front tam damage came on Corey days car was with the left rear of Tanner Gray Tanner by now after these after these few laps should should be able to feel if that tire was going down you see they're going to leave that right front tire on the 82 of Corey day again the arc officials will allow you to change a tire if it's flat or damaged or if the wheel may be damaged. So they may have deemed that that tire air pressure was up, no damage to the tire other than the letters being gone and they sent him on his way. So Tanner Gray with that contact there has led 59, I think that 60 laps led tonight. Gio Ruggiero credited with eight, Chris Wright with two, Andy J with one. So we're winding down here. Like Phil said earlier, it's not over until it's over. Connor Zilich is going to line up inside the second row, now in third. Corey Day will have to go to the back of the pack for making that pit stop. Now he's driving back to the front. Chris Wright is one to watch. He's had great speed tonight. He's avoided chaos, contact. And he finds himself up front. Andy Jay's having another solid day, too, right now, running in the fourth spot. I think some of these guys are like vultures. They see Corey Day going after him. They said, well, maybe he's not unbeatable. Maybe Tanner Gray is not unbeatable. Maybe we have something for him. So it's going to be fun to watch here these last 29 laps. There's Andy Jay. Finished sixth here back in May. Fourth right now. Such a great effort. You know, it's a small race team. It's his own race team. Volunteers on board. This Some good sponsorship. Yeah, for sure. And they work hard at it, too. Amber Balkin was able to get the free pass. She's back on the lead lap now. Here we go. Tanner Gray, Chris Wright. Green flag once again. What a restart by Tanner Gray. Okay, Connor Zillis going to try to get to the inside of Chris Wright. Andy Jankowiak, the outside of Connor Zillich. Zillich is going to try to pull up a side of Chris Wright. He's going to side draft him a little bit. See if he can beat him down to the corner. Chris Wright's hanging in there. Connor trying to hold it down there on the bottom. Doesn't quite make it work. We saw though Chris Wright gave him some room. The closer he would have gotten to him, the looser that car would have got, but Chris Wright gave him some room. Tanner's just been such a standout. That car is so fast. Chris Wright hanging on to second. Connor Zillich gonna try it a little differently this time. Hunting the top side. Yeah, I think after you run a few laps, I think the top is really where to be. That's where the most grip is. Again, we talked about it at the very top of the show. Thank you a little bit more than the bottom of the racetrack. Let's keep an eye on Zillich here. Should be able to get some momentum up off the corner from the high side. You see him close into about a car length and a half behind. Now Chris Wright said, well, I'm going to run the top of the racetrack, too. And Zilla says, well, then I'll run the bottom.
Great battle for second as Tanner Gray continues to lead. Led 86 laps here in May. He's led 64 laps so far and continues here at Kansas Speedway. Right now, Chris Wright's car is every bit as good as Village as it appears. You see the speeds there in the pylon. Tanner Gray with that clean air. It's fastest car on the racetrack. Let's see what happens this lap. Exactly the same situation. About seven one hundredths of a second faster than Chris Wright. Chris about a tenth and a half better than Zillich that lap. Corey Gay after coming down pit road and assessing the damage, he's shown his sixth. Eight cars on the lead lap. Amber Balkan hanging on to that eighth spot. There's, there's LeVar Scott. Right there running in the fifth spot. Holding off Corey Day right now. LeVar Scott hoping to lock up the Rookie of the Year honors. Next weekend at Toledo for the final race. Also second in the standings to his teammate. Saw Corey Day take a peek, trying to get around LeVar Scott, pick up that fifth spot. That was a good lap that time by Tanner Gray, three tenths of a second faster than second and third. Let's give a call to Amber Balkan. We saw that huge sl save, that slide. Got the free pass right now, running in the eighth spot, really doing a nice job. It's been a tough little stretch for her. She's had four races in a row outside the top ten. Would love to see her come back right now and get a get a top 10 finish doing a great job. Yeah, we heard from her interviewed the last couple of races, just heartbreak, frustration, things aren't going her way. Really good run for her. Hey, look, number two, Andres Perez. Heather updated us. They were going to town on that car, trying to get it fixed up. We talked about not having brakes. He had all that damage. They want to salvage a couple points here. Here goes Zillich, see if he can make the move now on Chris Wright. Ooh. Lap car right there, they get around him. Chris is going to hang in there on the outside. But Zillich pull over to side draft, try to pull that car back Ooh, a little bit and sideways. get sideways while he's doing it. Pinnacle Racing Group in the 28th went up against Venturini Motorsports. He has, Chris Wright. Cleared. he has them cleared right now, do a little bit of a slide job. He's got it. Zillich to third. Check that, he moves into second. See a change right there. Chris right back to third. Andy J hanging on to fourth. All right, maybe our last nominee for Reese's Sweet Move of the Race. He pulls over to side draft on Chris Wright and then gets so close. Then he has to pull a car away from him, gets a little bit sideways, but doesn't slow him down. And he goes ahead and makes the pass to grab that second spot. Be sure to visit ArcaRacing.com on Monday at 3 Eastern to see who is crowned the Reese's Sweet Move of the Race. 19 laps to go. Tanner Gray hangs on to it. Can he hang on? Find victory lane for the second time this season. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway for the Arkham and Ard Series. Penultimate race as we have the championship next Saturday. 13 laps to go, 87 in the books. And it's been a night for Tanner Gray. Once again, just domination. He's led 79 laps, continues out front. Heard from Ty Gibbs, who's in his pit box, and I believe I saw his younger brother Taylor Gray in his pit box as well. Trying to pull Tanner to this victory. His second victory of the year, hopefully, for them. This is while we're commercial break. Corey Day is going to make the move on LaVar Scott to grab that fifth spot. Move Corey Day up into the top five. Sue Chief camera on board. Corey's had a really impressive night tonight. Obviously, that damage on the right front. No harm, no foul. See Ooh. Jason Kitzmiller get a little bit loose there, then ran out of room, got into the outside wall, coming off turn four. He's running in the 13th spot right now. 
he stays on the racetrack. Last couple laps, Zilich has been a little bit faster than Tanner Gray, but not enough. He's going to need to need to get some chunks here with over a two and a half second deficit to Tanner Gray. Connor Zilich, a five-time winner in the series this year. Part-time driver. Hasn't been easy for him tonight either. Had unapproved adjustments at the start. Oh. Started in the back, and the caution is out for the fifth time. The absolute last thing that Tanner Gray and his team wanted to see. Ooh, Chris Wright in the wall. Looks like possibly another right front tire down. Don't know if that was from previous damage. He is stopped on the racetrack. Unfortunate for Chris Wright. Ran top five all race long. Probably only 30 to 35 green flag laps on these tires. Remember, we pitted at the halfway break and then ran a few caution laps. So only about 35 laps at the most green flag laps. But we saw a couple right front tires go down at the end of that first stage of the race. Tough break, though, for Chris running up in the top five, having a solid run going here. Trying to get a glimpse of what happened here to Chris Wright. Yeah, already in the wall. More than likely that tire went down in the middle of three and four. Nothing he could do about it, just had to ride it out. That will move Andy J right now up into the third position. Andy J looking for his best career finish, possibly. Fourth is his best finish of his career back at Michigan. It's been a great effort by him. There's Chris Wright assessing the damage. He'll join his teammate Isabella Robusto, who was out of this race, lap number two, slammed the outside wall after starting on the pole. The emotions of racing, just the highs of, and the lows. You know, in a matter of minutes. Capture a pole and five minutes later, your day is done and you're getting helped out of your race car. Yeah, Chris Wright's battling for the lead not that long ago and still had a solid top five run going and it's gonna come to an end, unfortunately. Looks like they have the car hooked up to the wrecker. And See the tires on pit wall. These teams will, are not allowed to change tires. And you can pit under caution. Yeah. But yeah, you, you can, can make adjustments yeah. if you need. And, and actually, I think you can change tires. Remember, they had eight tires in the pits. Because remember, in every caution is an opportunity to pit. So I like uh, I like Shane Huffman's uh, thinking here. Well, he had the tires on the wall, but then you could hear him say, I'm not sure we're going to gain yeah. anything. And so. Corey Day with the tires on the wall as well. And if you stay, if you're on the lead lap and you stay on the racetrack, then you would you would start in front of these cars. That do elect to pit if they do. This will be interesting. Another restart. Pit Road is open. Let's see if anybody takes the opportunity to come down Pit Road. How about Tanner Gray going to lead ah. this group down Pit Road? And remember, these are non-competitive pit stops. So as long as you don't lose a lap, how they came to Pit Road will be how they will restart this race, Heather. And Connor Zillich pulling into his pit stall right now. He reported to his crew chief, Shane Huffman, that he just needs to be tightened up on the short run. So there'll be a slight adjustment here for the 28 as well as four tires. Amanda. Yeah, Heather, they just called Taylor. 
uh, Tanner Gray into his pit box. He was telling the team about some of those adjustments. You do see those tires going on. Probably really smart, especially when they get to the left-hand side of that car. There were some issues with uh, the left rear. Tanner actually uh, electing to stay out there prior to this caution. However, Tanner said, please do not change my race car. It is perfectly balanced. I do not want to be more free. So the crew chief was talking about, should they add fuel? Should they not? They're going to get Tanner back out here for these last seven laps to see if he can finish off this dominating performance. Yeah, the only reason they're going to add fuel is for balance. They certainly have enough fuel to get to the end. These are 22 gallon fuel cells and these cars, unlike our trucks and Xfinity and Cup cars that have like 18 gallon fuel cells. So they have plenty of fuel to get to the end, but that keeps the balance to, to where they want it to the balance of weight front to rear. A team taking their time, looking over everything. This is going to set us up for an epic restart. Stay with us. Tanner Gray up front. Arca Racing on FS1 is brought to you by General Tire. General Tire delivers the freedom to explore. And Reese's. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's. Not sorry. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway. Let's check in real quick with Heather DeBoe. And catching up now with Connor Silich's crew chief, Shane Huffman. And I've got my ears on, so I was just listening to your spotter and driver talking about what they're going to do on this restart. You did not hear what they said, so what would you expect them to do? Uh, knowing Connor, he's going to be very aggressive. Uh, it's been an eventful day for sure, so uh, I can't really understand what the 22 is thinking unless, you know, maybe she's, you know, I don't know, thinking she can win the race here. But uh, um, put us in a little bit of a bad spot, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, I think uh, Connor can still get the job done. You know, the 18 has been strong all day. We've been, you know, forced to come from the rear all day. We haven't had a really good clean shot at it yet. So uh, we'll see what happens. What keeps you and your team motivated in those situations where you have to overcome adversity and come for the rear so many times? Just that, the fact that, I, you know, we want to come back. You know, we want, we're motivated to, uh, to be the best we can be no matter what the scenario is, you know. So uh, everybody's hungry, uh, including Connor and Derek up top and Steve and all these guys, you know. So it's just uh, just the, the competition, you know, and, and loving it. So thanks, Shane. Good luck. Thank remember, you, Heather. Remember, Jimmy, no out of bounds here. So you see that white line. It really doesn't mean that much. It's just there. It does separate the racetrack that's banked a little bit more than the apron. We get one to go, so keep an eye on Connor Zilich there. He's going to try to make the move to the inside of Amber Balkan as soon as this race starts. He has to stay in line till they get to the start finish line. Then he can, then he can, then he's free to go. So he will try to make it three wide to try to stay up with that 18 of Tanner Gray. Well, it's going to be exciting. Three laps to go at the line. Amber Balkan stayed out there, so she's shown as the leader. Tanner Gray on the outside, Connor Zilich on the inside behind Amber. And Andy jenkowiak has been hanging there all night long outside row number two. The yeah, Amber's at a huge disadvantage on those older tires here. We've seen how much new tires matter to these cars. So I think she will be definitely put in the middle going in turn one here. See her getting that car. She'll get it in second gear for this restart. These drivers will restart this in second gear. She is the control car. Remember, it's it's up to her when she goes. And again, no restart zone here in Arca. There's a restart line. Amber Balkin, the 32-year-old from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, driving for Venturini Motorsports. First female to lead since 2021 when Gracie Trotter did it at Daytona. Hang on. Here we go. Arkham and Art Series action from Kansas Speedway. As they make their way to the green flag. It's Amber Balkin, Tanner Gray. Amber gets a push from the 28 of Connor Zillich. She hangs on to it, was sideways, but it's Tanner Gray out front. That push really killed Connor Zillich's momentum. Look at Andy J in second. Andy Jankowiak says, the heck with my best career finish. I want to win this thing. 73 cars, been stout. Does he have enough for the 18? Amber Balkin hanging in there on those old tires. Corey Day up at the wall, and here comes Connor Zilich to the inside. And there those old tires were showing up for Amber. She did a nice job for half that lap, and then just nothing she could do about it. Look at Corey Day coming now in third. 
Cody Jankowiak all over the bumper of the 18. The 18 smoking. He's got an issue. Is something wrong with the left rear? Corey Day. The 82 on the inside. It's Andy not Jay is over. Gonna hang, hang in there tough. Coming down for one to go. Connor Zilich not giving up on the high side. Connor's gonna try to pass them both here down the straightaway. Tanner Gray hanging on. I don't see the smoke any longer. Three wide behind him. Corey Day into Andy Jankowiak. They're rubbing. We stay green. Tanner Gray continues to lead. Connor Zilich right behind him. Does he have enough time? Final lap. Tanner Gray has been so impressive with this 18 team. One earlier in the season. Checker flag in the air. Tanner Gray wins it at Kansas Speedway and gets that redemption. Outstanding job by Tanner Gray. Tell me that, le that left rear tire is, is low. You can see it smoking like you were talking about. How did he hang on to that? He could barely Look at drive it. it's around. Flat. It's, it's down. completely flat now. The drive of his life right there. He's going to try to do a burnout. It's going to go like that. <laughs> wow, that was exciting. Tough break, though, for Andy J. Corey Day was trying to make the pass on him. They got together, got Andy J in the wall. Still going to end up seventh, but, uh, but what a great job by doesn't, Andy J right there. Doesn't show the effort that he had all night running in the top five, and he's got a He's flat. got a flat left rear tire. We got to take a look at this again. We knew that Zilich was going to go to the bottom and make it three wide. Looked like Corey Day got loose getting in the corner. Then he just needed more room. And unfortunately, Andy J was there. He put Andy in the wall. You see LeVar Scott. He's going to grab that third spot. This is his onboard. Watch those two cars to get together. LeVar said, OK, stay there. I'm going by on the inside to grab that third spot. Great job by LeVar Scott. Great heads up driving. What a finish. Tanner Gray was class of the field all night long. Led 89 laps. The one thing he didn't get in the spring race here in May was victory. Dominated that one, too. He's had over 170 laps led in the two, two races here this year at Kansas. This A few one. battle scars on that car, though. He's made some contact. How about that left rear tire? I can't believe he was able to hang on for a lap and a half. His helmet is off. Tanner Gray is with Amanda. Oh, and Tanner, I think you got everything out of this race car tonight. You also pick up redemption from the spring. You defended yourself on those restarts and a dominating performance here today. When you know that you did your job from start to finish, how much more gratifying is that? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's obviously gratifying when you can come here and, and close these things out. I feel like we've been uh, in the position to win win most of them this year and I haven't done a very good job at the uh, at the restarts at the end so feels good to, to finally execute there uh, thought we were in trouble there when we uh, came through here I'm assuming Zillage just pushed the 22 and got her free into me but uh, yeah we, we had a bunch of damage there coming those last few laps so I was just happy to, to make it back to the checkered but all in all I'm uh, really proud of everybody from Joe Gibbs racing it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun being able to race with them this year and I've really enjoyed it so uh, hopefully, hopefully get to do it uh, some more in the future. But uh, all in all, just really proud of these guys, and can't thank everybody enough from Toyota and Joe Gibbs uh, Racing and everybody that's uh, involved. Well, I can't even imagine what goes through your mind when you look at that flat tire. But you made a pivotal decision to stay out earlier in the race with issues in the left rear. You told the guys that the tire was up, and I can stay out there. How much confidence did your race car give you to make that decision? Yeah, we were really fast. Uh, we were really good. You know, like after five, seven laps, I thought we were a pretty dominant car. Um, so, again, it's just a testament to everybody from Joe Gibbs Racing. But, uh, yeah, we had a lot of adversity thrown at us throughout the race, and uh, we were able to handle it all. So, uh, really proud of them. For the second time this season, and for the second time in his Arkham and Arts career, Tanner Gray is a winner. takes the checkered flag right there and then watch look at this Phil 
I thought at first maybe he was just just doing that on purpose or whatever. Then I see obviously the left rear tire is down. I'm telling he not only did he not have another lap, he didn't have another corner to hold off Connor Zilich. Look at that. The damage around it. I just cannot believe it hung on for a lap and a half. Driving like he had to to hang on to it and bring home the win. Let's hear from the second place finisher, Connor Zilich. Heather. And Connor brings it home second today. Connor, I heard you on the radio tell your spotter, Derek Nealon, you were going to give the 22 a really hard push, which is what we saw. But do you think that hurt you in the long run to be able to get to victory lane today? Yeah, I mean, maybe probably, but it's the only shot I had. I don't know what really the thought process was on the 22 team staying out there. Um, but, you know, I get it. It's three to go and you want to have a chance at a win. But, um, you know, just frustrating. You know, we had a car capable of winning there. But, um, yeah, just un unfortunate circumstances on the final restart. But still super proud of this Pinnacle Racing Group team, everyone at Silver Hair Racing. Uh, we had a good, clean day, and I learned a lot before my Xfinity race tomorrow. So I'm uh, just going to try and go out there tomorrow and learn as much as I can. And, uh, just have a good day, but today was fun. I, this place is really cool. I've enjoyed racing at Kansas, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow. How much do you think will translate from what you learned today to tomorrow's race in that Xfinity car? Yeah, a lot will. Um, you know, a, a bunch of it. Obviously, the Xfinity cars have less downforce, a little more power, so they're going to be a little more hung out. But, um, you know, today was good. My first race on a mile and a half, I ran Michigan, but that was basically a super speedway for us. So, uh, yeah, it was good to get my first kind of experience, you know, running the top and getting up close to the walls, trying to just play around with stuff when, when we got spread out there in that second stage and at the end of the first stage. But, um, yeah, just trying to learn as much as I can for tomorrow. Another strong finish here, Jamie, for Connor Zillage. Well done by him. He's always so well-spoken, such an eloquent young man. And he'll be in the Xfinity series, as he mentioned, tomorrow. He'll flip that switch in his brain. I'm in a different series, different competitors. We'll have more from Kansas Speedway after this. Stay with us. Tanner Gray takes us on board. Welcome back to Kansas Speedway, where the Reese's 150 just concluded. Victory Lane celebration ongoing as Tanner Gray gets the W. He's greeted by Ty Gibbs, who was his sign holder <laughs> during the race. Younger brother was there as well. Big night for that team. 10 wins, too, for that 18 car this year. Eight for William Sawalich, two for Tanner Gray. We talk about that's a magic number, 10 wins. And Great job by that Joe Gibbs racing team, Matt Ross and all his yeah. guys for 10 wins this year and have a shot to make it 11 next week at Toledo. They sure do. Well, of our Scott picks up his 10th top five finish of the season, Heather. Yes, he did third. Again, second week in a row for you, LeVar, but it was didn't come without a struggle. So what was the biggest challenge for you in today's race? Um, I think we started the day with a lot of speed all, most of the day, but then that second caution kind of, the second restart kind of killed our speed. Um, the car still drove really well, just had no straightaway speed, but my guys on, on the rev team, my crew chief, we worked really hard to kind of get it to drive decent where we could finish on the lead lap and have a chance to do what we did in the end, but uh, just not a shot to win it. With one race left in the season now, what are you looking to accomplish next weekend in Toledo? Um, just honestly do what we do every single week, uh, overcome adversity and come off with a good finish. Thanks, LeVar. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Heather. And we talked about the points for LeVar Scott. Let's take a look at how they stand with one race remaining. 35-point advantage. He cut into it quite yeah, a bit cut today. Into it. Yeah, depending on how many cars start at Toledo, it may be... Uh, it may be undoable for LeVar Scott, but nonetheless, a great year for LeVar Scott. Remember, I talked at the beginning of the show, he lost 28 points to Andres Perez in the first three races, and then he really started to pile up the top fives and top tens. Saw his, saw his record for the year with a bunch of top five finishes and top tens. Still an outstanding season for, really, for Rev Racing. One, two right now in points. See Chris right there in third, Tony Breidinger running the full series, fourth in points. Didn't talk about her a whole lot today, but one guy in the field that we talked a lot about, Andy Jankowiak. Let's hear from him, Amanda. And I do like seeing a smile turn around for Andy J right back here. He just got a handshake from Ross Chastain saying, good job tonight. I know you felt that you had a shot at it of what could have been tonight. Walk us through the end of that race. Yeah, you know, we, we got to the 18 there, and um, I had a run to the bottom, and he blocked it. and. Um, 
I don't know. I don't want to be out there just killing people trying to do this stuff. I like to run clean, and I uh, I backed out of it a little bit. And, um, you know, I figured we'd race, race another lap there. And, um, yeah, I'm just looking at it right now on the screen at, after that. But when I got the run to the 18 and he blocked it, I kind of let up just a little bit just to figure we keep racing. But the, the 82 got a run on me there. And uh, let's just let's just say courtesy wasn't, uh, wasn't returned. It wasn't the same guy. But... Uh, I uh, hate it for my guys, you know, we're one of the smaller teams, you know, we got some good sponsorship and we got a really great ownership group here and, uh, you know, we're fighting hard for those top fives and, uh, you know, it, it kind of sucks to lose it there at the end. Just uh, wish we could have been raced a little bit better than that, but uh, those are the breaks and, and we'll, uh, we'll remember who we can race with out there. And, uh, but all in all, uh, you know, just working over the, uh, Joe Gibbs car for the lead there at the end for a little team. It's a it's a good way to go into the off season for us, and, and we're going to be back next year for sure. So, just uh, proud of my team and a Casey Energy and then Wheeland Automotive Consultants, Florida Safety Systems, and uh, Yukon Creek Sportsman Club, and uh, just just everybody that just makes this thing go. Uh, Dax Market. I always said a Casey Energy, but uh, just just proud of my team. They gave me a hot rod, and I was giving it everything I could there. So um, we'll be back. Thank you, Andy. And we're going to go check out on Amber Balk. And if I can find where she is positioned, you guys, it was a pivotal call for her tonight as well as she decided to stay out there for that final restart. I'll be curious to know what was in her thoughts on that as she went through that decision. I will find um, where she is parked here. Um, but in the meantime, we'll go over and talk with Corey Day after just talking with Andy. And I do know that there were some uh, words exchanged between you guys on what happened on track. What's your perspective on it? Uh, yeah, I just, you know, the 28 kind of grabbed my left rear and pulled me back there. And I was trying to grab his left rear and pull him back there on that you know, come to the white. And um, I just went down in the three right off the, the 28s. Uh, right rear trying to take his air and then uh, you know he was right outside of me trying to take my air and I just got really free up up into him and um, I think if he would have entered a lane up and gave me air he might have ended up driving around us both so um, just kind of goes to go to show putting someone else in a bad spot it doesn't really play out for you great all the time well Corey you're still getting a hang of everything out here you come off of Bristol you come into here what do you make of everything so far yeah, it was, you know, really cool to run the top five all day today. And, um, you know, thanks to Greg Ives, the race car had a lot of, lot of speed, especially on, you know, long flag or long green flag runs there. So, um, yeah, just, just really happy to, to have a lot of speed and, you know, run up front with these guys. Thank you, Corey. And, guys, we go back to the conversation as it was uh, last weekend when we were just saying how much praise that Kyle Larson is giving this young kid. We do know that he will bounce back. That's right, Amanda. He doesn't have a whole lot of time before his next race. The Craftsman Truck Series coming up. Corey Day in the 91 truck tonight will start 18th. Round of 10, elimination race, 8.30 Eastern. We'll be back to wrap things up from the Arkham and Art Series. Families affected by Hurricane Helene urgently need support. Help the American Red Cross provide meals and shelter to these families in need. Donate today to Hurricane Helene by going to redcross.org or calling 1-800-RED-CROSS. And our thoughts and prayers certainly with all of those affected from Florida up through the mm -hmm. Carolinas. What a devastating uh, storm. Um, so many people impacted, so we're certainly thinking about that. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's hear from Amber Balkin. What a night she had, Amanda. Absolutely, Jamie. And Amber, I will tell you that Phil has nominated you for the Reese's Sweet Move of the race. When you had that save between three and four, the in car of that was just absolutely wild. But I want to go back to that restart that you had when you were leading laps here at Kansas. What was your thought process on that? Yeah, I knew that the cars around me were going to have better tires, but I thought it was the right decision by my crew, Nick Tucker, and the Venturini team to keep out there and see what we could do, right? We, we had nothing to lose, so really happy we made that decision. The Icon Direct 22 car was good today, and there's a couple times we had, were quite sideways, got ping-ponged around a little bit, but we were either able to gather it up, and um, would have been nice to keep a little closer up front, but I knew with those fresh tires around me, that'd be tough. Thank you. Nice job tonight, Amber. Thank you. And Gio Ruggiero brings it home fifth in your first mile and a half. So Gio, how would you summarize your race today? Yeah, it was a tough race. We really struggled all day. Um, fifth is obviously not where I want to be. So got some stuff to figure out and uh, some big improvements to make for the next one. Thanks, Gio. Thank you. Gio Ruggiero 
brings it home fifth in the 20 car. Amber Valken tied her career best finish with that sixth place run. Good for her. Yeah, it's good to see her with a smile on her face. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't easy tonight, that's it, it for sure. It wasn't, it wasn't. I'm telling you, if, if the people at home don't vote for her and the reach the sweep move, then that's that's wrong. It's just absolutely wrong. <laughs> I'm going right. to vote. Phil gonna Parsons vote. has spoken, that's ladies right. and gentlemen. It was an exciting one, just when we thought Tanner Gray was just going to have a runaway. They kept it exciting, a couple mm -hmm. cautions at the end. And then he's able to hang on to it with the left rear going down. Unbelievable, as you see the Crossman Truck Series. Truckers pushing them out to the grid. Ty Majeski starting on pole there. And oh, by the way, Tanner Gray will go from victory lane into the truck. He'll roll off 21st tonight. Again, that's coming up at 8.30 Eastern, right here on FS1. And we will eliminate two drivers. We'll go from 10 to two for the round of eight. We're gonna 10 to eight. For the round, for the round of eight. What <laughs> I said. Ten Are to we two, adding? Ten for two. <laughs> You're gonna <laughs> get rid of eight drivers. Just two. We're gonna just, just two. get rid of two. And yeah. a lot on the line for that guy right there, Daniel Dye. He's in the hunt. Tony Bridinger. What a race it was for the Arkham and Art Series. One race to go to decide it all. We will crown a champion next Saturday. Congratulations to the 18 team and Tanner Gray. For Phil Parsons, Heather DeBoe, Amanda Music, and our entire Fox Sports team. I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you back here at 8.30 Eastern for the Truck Series.